This was my main event. Eagles main event. Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Moreno. Man. Sometimes you pick a fight and you get it wrong and you feel terrible about it because you're like, damn. And that, that happened in the, the Whitaker Duplessis fight. Sometimes you pick a fight and you're right about it and it still hurts just as bad. And that was this one. Man. Uh, Brandon Moreno, dude, just always in bangers, dude. Always I mean, in bangers. He really is. Like, Cannot I just be a boring want, fight. I just want to see him have just like a crazy dominant performance one time. I mean, we saw that twice against uh, Figueredo. Uh, yeah. The second fight. Yeah, I guess uh, when when he subbed him, when he yeah, subbed that him, that insane. other fight was pre- that that other fight though, the one with the uh, doctors, fin- one? Uh, the doctor stoppage. That one was still pretty competitive, man. But it was, it was competitive. a competitive fight for both of them. It was competitive, um, but the last like four minutes of that fight was pretty much Moreno just going off, you know. Yeah, Ay, man, this one really bummed me Tyker out. Moreno, France. that was good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, a little. Little liver kick, you know, but don't forget, yeah. I think Kaikara France uh, hurt him too, right? Cut him cracked open him. pretty bad, cracked yeah. him. Yeah, let's not do that, man. And uh, that, that's part of, of the love from Reno, though. You know, people mm-hmm. continue saying that Mexican fight style where he just bites down and, and swings when he has to. And we saw that last night too. We're like, please get out of that. We don't yeah. need a phone booth Move. fight right now. <laughs> he was doing so good, uh, you know, when he started landing that left, the jab started connecting that second round. He started mm-hmm. uh, landing that left hook, ducking underneath it, and coming out to the left side, moving laterally. And that's yeah. when we saw some of the best success coming from, from Moreno. Uh, and then uh, Pantoja, you called it, though, with his blitzing style. Yeah, and Regent says, I feel bad for Brandon. I thought Pantoja would win, but I didn't want him to. That's exactly what I was saying. Like, And Tosi said Moreno cuts easy. He definitely does. He, he's bleeding in pretty much every fight. And, in fact, after the first round, his coach even said, we knew we were going to bleed tonight. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so good, like that, dude. Right? But yeah, Pantoja, his style, because Moreno doesn't really have that like one punch knockout power, um, and and Pantoja definitely does. Um, it's also just really hard to knock out Moreno. He dropped him in the first round, but basically what Pantoja's style is is I'm going to run at you. You're going to probably outstrike me on the numbers, but I'm going to land bigger shots, really hard shots. That's going to make you fumble when I get close, and you'll get off balance. He'll grab onto you. And he'll take your back. And, I mean, he did exactly that. He did exactly what he's done in the past. He's so good at it. Um, and I knew Moreno sometimes has a difficult time uh, standing his ground. Like, he'll stand his ground, obviously, like mentally. Um, but physically, sometimes he does get knocked off balance. And he trips up. And he and there's weird little moments that he, he crosses his feet sometimes. Um, and... And I thought because of that, those are the openings that Pantoja is really good at forcing. He already he's now he's fighting somebody who is already susceptible to that, and it's just going to feed right into his game plan. And it kind of did. Moreno, like you said, he started landing the left a lot. Uh, found out broke his hand in the first round, broke his right hand in the first round. So Moreno did probably yeah probably why he was so active with the left for the rem- mm. remainder of that fight. It worked for him though. It worked, but could you imagine if he could have followed up with a 100% right hand throughout the night? Maybe a different thing. Uh, Tosi says, uh, in between fourth and fifth, uh, with both coaches screaming at their fighters, was a straight movie scene. Yeah, Regent says that's a great moment. Yeah, yeah. I. it's tough because I would have liked to see Moreno go a little harder in the fifth round because it, it was pretty obvious he needed a finish at that point. Um, I, thought, I thought it was... Uh, three to one going into the fifth round. But at the same time, if he does go for broke to try to get that finish, that's pretty much the exact thing that Pantoja needs to execute his game plan. So he does have to be cautious and it still ended up not mattering because Pantoja still took his back in that fifth round and just, man, it's tough, but what a banger. What a banger. Yeah, man. I'm sad about it. I, dude, I was so bummed out, man. I love Brandon Moreno. You know, I'm a big fan. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Brandon Moreno, the fighter. You know, uh, I don't know him personally, but I'm also a fan of Brandon Moreno, the person. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, it's tough, man. It's tough. And like I said, for me, Brandon Moreno rekindled 
some of those feelings that I got as a kid watching some of these Mexican boxing legends walking out, you know, and I get the exact same feeling when I see Brandon Moreno. Yeah. So there's this extra, like, I don't know, nostalgia. there's this extra thing. Yeah, nostalgia that I get whenever I see Brandon Moreno fight. And so for me, that that was really heartbreaking last night, you know? Yeah. Moreno, um, uh, Regent says, Moreno kind of upset me in the fifth, man. His corner told him he needed to finish, and Brandon looked like he was just trying to win the round. Yeah, and I think it's tough because – Broken hands, you know, Pantoja was gassed for sure. That was, that was a crazy thing. Pantoja was gassed after the first round, but he just continued to push through it like it didn't matter. Um, and there was a couple moments where where Moreno had him hurt, you know, and had him up against the fence and was and was hitting him with combos that looked like maybe he, that maybe this is what's going to overwhelm him and drop him uh, and maybe not be one of those, like, knockouts, but the flurry is just too much and they end up dropping, you know. Um, but in those moments... That's where Pantoja can grab a hold of you and end up taking your back. And he just did such a good job of, I mean, we talked about it numerous times, how he basically will get you on the clinch. It's almost like a side saddle. He'll he'll entangle your legs and he'll either jump for the back take or he'll just sit down. And then he sits down and he just brings you with you with him. And now he's got your back. And it, he, he did that a few times. Just so crafty with, with ending up on your back and, Good for um, Moreno to um, for uh, for surviving those those exchanges on off his back because there was a couple times where I mean he really had to fight the hands you know mm-hmm. um, but I mean just yeah at one point there was like four minutes left in the round <laughs> yeah and then and props to Moreno he had some very good sweeps as well I think three. he had like three reversals yeah three in the fight yeah um, so yeah that was fantastic uh, it was a great fight the post fight interview man I went back and rewatched it. Uh-huh. Oh my God, dude! Pantoja says he thinks his mom. His mom basically raised him and his brother, and then he says, "Dad, are you proud of me now?" Or something like something like that. It's Oof. like, God, Oof. he brings his family in there with his kid. I mean, just it sucks because, and I, I've seen people say this um, that they were basically rooting against Pantoja only because of how much they like Moreno. You yeah. know, you're not gonna dislike Pantoja, but it's tough when they fight your boy. You know, screw that guy. Yeah, he also he beat uh, Manel Cap, so it was already <laughs> screw that guy. But, uh, also, the judges, awful. Ben Cartledge, that's an investigation for sure. I mean, just is that the guy that sense. gave it to uh, Moreno? He gave Pantoja the first round, which obviously, right? He knocked him down. He outstruck him. Yeah. Uh, and then every other round to Moreno. That's insane. Mm. That's the only other the only round that was even arguable was the third round in my opinion. Yeah, that was uh, and I think, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe the fourth, but yeah, Tosi says forty nine forty six fire that man. I mean, just a just a terrible scorecard, and and that's when I think it's like that's corruption. Uh, Tosi says this is Pantoja's first five round fight. I think the first two rounds he was a bit overwhelmed by the moment. Yeah, I mean, especially you think you you almost got him out. You dropped him in the first round, you know. Uh, yeah. Moreno easily took the second round, um, and and so I, I thought that was the changing of the tides. I thought that was the momentum shift that second round. It was like, oh man, Pantoja, because he looked exhausted. Yeah. You know, the, and, and there was a few lefts that he landed where you see Pantoja stumble a little bit, and even when he yeah. was trying to move back and create some space between him and Brandon, you saw the mm-hmm. stumbling going on. The the tired man stumble, you know. The tired man stumble, yeah. And then he just kept. It's like I'm just gonna charge at you, throwing these bombs and and take you down. Tosha says Cap versus Pantoja next. See, that's what did I say like three weeks ago? What did I say? Because they booked, they booked, uh, they're trying to book at least Cap versus uh, Kaikara France. I, did they already book that? I think they're. Mm, I don't know. They're they're trying to, but what a fight though. That's such a good fight too. I know, dude. That is such a good fight, and. And Manel Cap and, and Pantoja already fought, uh, and it was a, a decently close fight. Uh, yeah, UFC 293, Kai of France versus Manel Cap. And I said, Pantoja beats Moreno, and then Cap beats Kai of France, and then takes out Pantoja in the rematch to get the belt. I've been calling it for the past three years that Cap's going to be, be the champ. You have. And Taking a little bit longer Cap, than expected, you know, but... A little bit longer than I expected, but... <laughs> But I'm I I want to see that. I think Manel Cap can beat Kaikara France, um, and I think if you beat Kaikara France, you get a title shot. Maybe they'll do Pantoja versus Amir Al Bazi, 
uh, next. I, mean, I know Amir Albazi technically beat Kaikara France, um, but you got to do something with him. So they'll probably do Amir Albazi versus Pantoja, or they'll sell, they'll say Amir Albazi is not a draw. We're just going to do Moreno versus Pantoja, or maybe um, Brandon Royval. I think he was the the backup Ooh, for this fight, so maybe they'll do Royval versus Pantoja in the meantime. That'd be it's fun. Fantastic division, though. Cannot believe is. they were going to get so rid of It's so stacked now. It's so stacked now. Dude, if I were if I were one of those reporters in the press conferences after these fights, anytime there's a title fight with with uh, flyweights, I'd be like, hey, remember when uh, you were going to get rid of them? <laughs> Just keep reminding them. Did you wouldn't be invited to your third? Okay, after the dude, second one, they'd be like, "All right, this guy's just gonna ask this question." I would never make it to my second, dude. I would. Never, <laughs> there's always some bullshit, and they never ask about it. And it's like, if you're there, you got to. Tosi says they won't do a Moreno in, in another rematch. I disagree because in the press conference, they asked Dana about it, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. We just got to figure out." Because uh, they're like, "It's already tough, you know. This is now the third loss he's had to Pantoja, but it was a really good fight." And then. Dan is like, it is a fantastic fight. And, you know, I think uh, he's like, it's a fantastic fight and it's tough, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have to think about it, things like that. And then they're like, oh, what about Roy Vall? He's like, as soon as I left, Roy Vall pulled me aside. He said he wants, he wants, he, like, he wants it. He thinks he could beat this guy. And, uh, and they're like, so does he get that fight? He's like, we got to think about it. It's like, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> that's the seed right there, dude. That's Moreno. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> all right, man. Well, uh, that's all I got for that one. Um, yeah, what a fight, We though. still have a few fights left to cover. One fight of the night. As it should. As yeah. it should, man. There should be fights of the night. They should have multiple fights of the nights. Because no there was another one that, that deserved it. A budget for it. Hey, everybody. Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description, and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, Don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have, uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.